Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 10th uh, School Choice National Conference. As Baish mentioned in her opening remarks, that this is an unconventional idea and it's also an unconventional topic for a school choice conference that we have done. Right? As you know, CCS is focused primarily on education policy. As a policy organization, we have never bothered to look into what happens in a school or inside a classroom. Right? So our focus was largely on how do you structure the rules of the game in a sense, the regulatory system and the accountability mechanisms so that the schools would perform and how they perform, how they achieve those goals would be up to them. Right? And recently, and now this is my personal story in a way, which also brings to the uh, topic uh, that we are going to discuss today. So when Mana and I were looking, Mana, my wife and I were looking for a school for our son, uh, for the first time I realized that despite the fact that I knew so much about education policy, I had no idea of how to choose the right school uh, for my son. And as a part of the process of figuring out what would be the right school for him, I began to look into what happens inside the school and particularly what happens inside classroom. And in that process, I think to my shock, I discovered that what we normally do in a school is exactly opposite uh, to what we should be doing in a school. And I just could not believe that that is really the case. So I kept digging deeper and deeper to understand why are we doing what we do in the normal school and why and what are the challenges that we face. So I first came across this whole idea of role of play in child's development. Uh, Peter Gray, uh, sort of evolutionary psychologist who has done some work in this area. And you realize once you understand what play is, right? We are, we, most of us think play is a time pass, right? Children just pass the time playing until they have to do other more important things, right? But if you think about what happens in a play is actually what we now refer to as 21st century skills, right? Uh, that's what they are learning on the playground when they organize in teams, right? That's what they are practicing on the playground and that's where they are getting evaluated also for the skills they are able to practice or not, right? So imagine a situation where you are a 10 year old trying to sort of gather together four or five other kids to get interested in what you want to play. Each one wants to play their own game. You have to figure out how do I convince the other three or four guys to play the game that I'm interested in, right? And you can see the negotiation skills, the offering that you would have to make, right? gather them together, lead them into designing the game. Game has to be fair. If you play by unfair rules, people would not play with you again. So if you think through what happens on a playground is actually the, one of the most important thing in the child's development. Something we have pretty much taken away uh, in our times. When my son hardly ever plays other than the school, uh, in a playground where, with other kids, uh, who are not part of his school. And so I think thinking a little bit more about it as a, just as a parent, not as a sort of policy researcher, uh, I began to realize that what is happening in our education system requires deeper analysis and thinking. And that's in a sense the reason why we chose this topic uh, for, uh, for the School Choice Conference, uh, that this is an important issue. It goes beyond policy in some sense. Uh, but hopefully it brings back to policy uh, because I realized that Right to Education Act, uh, the way we have defined various requirements under the act, won't allow many of the schools which are going to be on the podium today talking about their experiences uh, to exist, right? Most of the schools I know of uh, who are in this arena would be Ill are illegal, right? They would not meet the requirements but probably of BI teachers Many of the teachers are not BA degree holders. They are people who love teaching, and that's the love of teaching is what brought them to uh, school, right? Many of the schools would not have the same kind of infrastructure that RT requires, right? They would not probably be paying the salaries to teachers which are equal to the government scale salaries, right? 
So look at all the requirements we have put on the Right to Education Act. They basically undermine any option of alternative education other than the mainstream standardized education. Now there's a lot of discussion around that and I, as I dig deeper I learn more and I hope to learn more today from the panel discussion we are going to have. And I'm very grateful for the people who agreed to be uh, part of this conference and bring this topic to uh, highlight. And I hope that at the end of the conference we are able to create some of a consensus that public policy needs to, education policy needs to change in a way to allow such experiments to happen, not just to happen, but also flourish, right? And champion them, and hopefully we recognize the contribution that they are making uh, in the cause of education. So thank you all for being here. I see the house is pretty much full, uh, and it's great to see the kind of interest that all of you are showing uh, in this topic. Uh, I look forward to the deliberations and discussions uh, for, for the day. Thank you.